Hi YouTube and welcome to another uh, episode of Machining on the Lathe and today we're going to look at machining long diameters using a steady rest. Okay so I've got a job in, um, uh, it's a manufacturing job so it's a little bit um, away from what I would normally do which is engine work but uh, being as I'm a qualified machinist then uh, I do take on some uh, um, engineering manufacturing jobs from time to time. Anyway this is an interesting one because uh, I get to use uh, the steady rest, uh, which is something that doesn't very often get used and uh, doesn't always get shown nowadays, uh, especially on our videos. Uh, it's, it's a little bit old school, but uh, nevertheless, I've got an opportunity to show uh, it being used and, and, and give you some tips on um, how I certainly use them. Uh, as you can see with this set up in my lathe, uh, the tailstock is, is actually a little bit off the end of the bed. so. We're starting to use the full length of the machine here. This is a Colchester Student uh, 6 by 24 so 24 inch between centres. I've actually got to machine this shaft down um, to the working length uh, is 400 mil. So that's uh, 400 millimetres is what I've got to take off. Uh, so that's ooh, about 16 inches thereabouts. So um, what I'm going to do here is just use this video to give you an idea of how I go about doing this. Um, if anybody else uh, needs to machine uh, particularly long shafts, uh, small diameters, where uh, that would be impossible to do without some sort of support, then uh, this is the video for you. So apologies for the uh, the mess on the lathe, but I'm, I'm sort of more than halfway through this job now, so the machine's all nicely set up. There's obviously swarf on the machine. So I don't want to disturb it. We'll just uh, go through what I do here. So um, look, the, one of the most important things uh, is to make sure uh, that you've got a nice accurate chuck so that your initial material goes in nice and centrally. Uh, and then obviously you need to centre drill the end, which I've already done here. And then I'm using my uh, live centre in the end to support it. When you set up your centre, uh, you want the minimum hanging out, okay? So to maximise the support. Um, and obviously, you only want the minimum material uh, between the chuck and the centre, um, you know, if you, if you can do that. So that's what I've kind of got set up here. Uh, the material I'm setting up here is uh, 316S stainless steel. Um, it cuts very nicely, although uh, a bit abrasive, so you need the, the, the right tooling for it. Um, the main uh, thing we're going to use here is the steady rest, uh, and this consists of uh, basically feet which move in and out, um, both from the top, as you can see it coming down the shaft, and at the back. And the idea there is to support the shaft as that rotates in this direction. If you come and put a machine tool up to this, what's going to happen is the bar is going to lift and go back. So the steady rest is designed to stop it lifting and stop it moving back. OK, so this works very well once it's set up properly, um, but setting it up properly uh, requires an understanding of the machining forces in order to get very good results. Okay, so the first thing I do before we start doing any shaft machining is I create a run out area. And the run out area is so when the feet travel down the bar and the tool lags behind the feet, the feet run off the end of the uh, uh, turned area and into the clearance area and, and don't um, interfere uh, with the cut or um, don't run into stock material that hasn't been cleared out of the way. So we're going to machine this to under the size we need of the shaft um, to create a clearance for that to run into uh, when we get to the end of the cut. Okay, so what I've done there is I've uh, wasted that down. So that's under the finished diameter for this part of the shaft. And that just gives uh, space for the feet of the um, running steady to travel into after we finish the cut. So set your cutting tool up so that when it hits the stop, there's the stop, uh, the tool just clears your cut area and equally the chuck and the steady rest do not come into contact. So with that all up against the stop, 
it's nice and safe and there's no contact. The reason why I put the black line, the black marker pen on there is so that uh, I can watch if that's slipping in the jaws with the force of the cut. Now, whenever I've used a steady rest, I've always found that they operate better once the, um, uh, the uh, bronze has, has worn into the same uh, radius as the shaft that you're cutting. So uh, this has taken a few shafts uh, to get like that, uh, but I'm now happy with it and it runs very well. Now, the other thing is, this is a raw shaft now, so this is not actually going to track perfectly centrally when it runs round. So the first cut won't be perfect because um, the uh, shaft is not completely round and not centred. And therefore, as it goes round and hits, uh, hits these feet, the shaft will actually move slightly. So we won't be cutting anything round or, um, you know, particularly straight. So... What we're going to do here is we take a light pass and we're going to set these uh, up by moving these in and out with the machine running and, to, and just to put a light, a light contact, so not pressure. So you don't want to screw them down hard, you just want to, just so they touch. Now the other thing you might see there is that's moving. So where that's worn, you want to make sure that that kind of finds that nice contact point so I'm not forcing that that's just touching it so you think of these um, steady rests as a guide rather than a clamp okay because what you're trying to do is to stop the shaft moving and they only need to rest up against it so with the lathe running we bring up and I always adjust the back one first and we just bring it up so it's just touching and then most importantly lock it off so it can't move same again with the top one we bring it up so it's just touching make sure it's seated properly just touching and then lock it off now we're ready to cut next most important thing with these tools where they're just using bronze plain brushes is oil so you need to oil the shaft So there's plenty of lubrication, it doesn't overheat the shaft. And now we can start cutting. So for this shaft I'm using a speed of uh, 95 meters per minute and 0.17 millimeters per rev feed rate. And as that runs down we just add a little bit of oil to keep that shaft lubricated. As you can see, the oil smokes off. You don't really want to breathe that in, so you want to make sure you've got good ventilation to keep that from going in your lungs. As you can see, as it goes down, you need to be able to take sufficient cut to break a chip. So we're just about doing that at the moment. It's not the ideal chip, but it's good enough for what we need here. As you can see, that's cutting beautifully, we've got no chatter, and that's exactly what you want. So now we've done our first pass, uh, what you want to do is just put your hand on the shaft and see how warm it is, okay? Because uh, the shaft shouldn't actually, it will get warm, but it shouldn't get hot. If it's getting hot, you've set too much tension on your uh, guide pads on the steady. So in this case, this is only ever so slightly, this is tepid basically, and it's, um, yeah, that uh, shows that we've got a perfect setting. Um, what we're going to do now is set up for the second pass, take another cut. Um, it's uh, important that when you do that, you back the feet off, you wind the machine, but you wind the um, saddle back, and then prepare for the next cut and go through the same procedure. So now we're going to set up the feet again on this new diameter. And because this diameter has now been cut, it's a lot more accurate. So the next, uh, the next pass should be the most accurate. Right, let's take the second pass.
you also want to make sure between passes that you're steady, uh, that your live centre has not come loose in the end. It is common to do that because if this shaft gets hot, it expands and then it will push the live centre out of the end and when it cools down, it becomes loose. Equally, if the chuck is loose and the material moves in the chuck, the live centre will come out of the end and lose support. So what sort of tolerances can we expect when you're turning a parallel shaft? Well, I'll just uh, get my micrometer out and we'll have a look. So if we have a look at that one, we can see that that is 20.72 and a little bit. Let's go to the middle of the shaft. And that's 20.71, just under the 7.2. And go to the end of the shaft. And we're back to 20.72. Now, I could get that better than that. But in reality, that's more than good enough for the job anyway. So my point is, is when you set this up using this process uh, and the, the fix steady, you can get very, very good, very accurate results. Not only that, uh, that's actually pretty round as well. So if we, if we measure it all the way around, you will find that. That's pretty good. So that's just under 7.2 there. So, you know, we've only got effectively microns on that shaft, which is pretty much, you know, start borderlining on getting into grinding territory. So when you actually want to set up an old lathe, and this is a very old lathe, um, you can still get exceptional accuracy and not only that you can get a very good surface finish okay so um if your shaft uh, unlike the one i've got here if your shaft is uh, you're finding it's tapered so it's uh, perhaps bigger here than it is here um, then what you need to do is the usual way of taking out taper is to adjust your tailstock uh, and I just use dial gauge on the compound uh, touching the side of there and then I just simply adjust the screws in the side of the tailstock to move that this way or that way and if this is small you need to move your tailstock this way and if this is large compared to the other end you need to move your tailstock this way and obviously if your shaft is 05 larger here, then what you need to do is to move this towards you by half the amount, so 025 on the gauge. Now other things you need to be aware of when you're machining shafts like this is tool pressure. Um, so first things first is the insert, I use a, a, a 0 0.4 nose radius and a positive insert, so it, it minimizes the um, the pressure on the workpiece. Now the other thing is, if you change the pressure on the workpiece, either by varying the depth of cut or varying the surface speed, uh, it will change the shape of the shaft on every pass, simply because it pushes more or less force on that. So what you need to do is a few practice runs to work out um, you know, how many cuts you've got to take to hit your final diameter and what, what uh, um, you know how many passes you need to do to, to, to basically get down to your final size. So um, this this final size is actually uh, nineteen point nine five. So this one is uh, I've just measured it is within only about three microns the whole length of the shaft. So as I say, when you get this dialed in and you get your tool pressures controlled and your steady fit um, steady rest uh, set properly, uh, this is an extremely accurate way to machine shafts. 
Well, I hope you found that video useful. Um, as ever, if you want to see more engineering or um, A-Series Classic Mini related uh, content, then please like and subscribe. I'll see you soon. Thank you.